for this space, for this place. Hello, TEDx Dayton. I told myself, if I can get teenagers to listen to me, I surely can make it through a TED talk, right? <laughs> Today, my talk will be broken into three parts. There will be uh, takeaways, the prologue, and the actual monologue itself, Katrina 2031. This work for me is centered in humanity. And so I thought I would come up with my own definition to start. For me, humanity is a vulnerable space allowing me to tap into the pulse of the human condition. Throughout this process, I realized that I create poetry that weave our daily life experiences into spaces that we often ignore, but speak volumes about our social norms and cultural, cultural influences. Today, I want you guys to do three things for me. First, identify your personal definition of humanity. And then from there, find a space within you to house that definition. And then lastly, expand your appreciation for experiences that, that does not mirror your personal reality. Can we do that? I'm going to need you guys' energy to get through this. I promise I am. <laughs> the prologue of Katrina 2031. 2005, when Katrina initially happened, I felt powerless. Having roots in Louisiana, the damages really hit home. It was my artistic desire to never forget that steered my pen and drove me to write this poem. I think it was from a place of acceptance that birthed Katrina 2031, a fictional monologue telling the life story of Angela Shafi, an American citizen whose family suffered from the endless devastation of the aftermath. You know, Angela lost all of her matriarchal figures in the hurricane, but she grows up and goes on to become a Corps engineer because protecting her city was paramount. I think it was the recent death of her father uncovering the truth about the purpose of the past levee breaches and the pain that causes her to take matters into her own hands and make the decision to blow the levees again in 2031. Six years ago, I owned a red tricycle. It was passed down from four generations of cousins. So the right back wheel was wobbly, and the ledge that connected the back wheels was bent. Our house, four from the corner on the left-hand side of the street, a dusty tan three-bedroom, small porch, three steps, and the bottom one was broken. We didn't have a gate, but you could tell where our yard ended because the grass was greener on both sides of us. I loved riding that red tricycle up and down the sidewalk of those four houses. Nana, would sit on the front porch yelling, child, tell those children to get off the corner and ride back toward the house. That day was just like everyone before it. Now, days fade, faint despair meshing with what I can still 
taste, smell, and hear. Every time I close my eyes or taste a potato pie. Nana's face, cocoa brown with small pudgy features. Wavy silver hair that she always kept pulled back. Dad was home late most nights after work, close to bedtime. Mom would run his bath right after mine. He'd kiss me on the forehead and say, good night. Nana said he was a hard-working man, and Mama should be glad to have him. Sunny days ain't shine quite the same. Those memories, so vivid. They say I look just like Mama. Without pictures, I can only take their word. Can't remember her face, vaguely her voice. In my dreams, my dreams. We're standing in my bedroom, and she's saying, Child, you gonna wear a dress today. Maybe shorts tomorrow. Don't give no lip. It ain't necessary. Mama's face is faded with the outrage of our displacement. Now, 29 years of age, and the rage has kept me breathing. Folks is tired of hearing my story. But after today, my story will finally have meaning. Mama's numb death will not be in vain. My abandonment will no longer threaten my survival. This is the best therapy I've ever had. I prayed to Jah, talked to the counselor. Now the judgment of the oppressor will finally see my invisible color. After one time, there is another. After today, that good Christian God-fearing brotherhood will have a reason to march like my people didn't. No more homeless worries, drunken nights, making light of the hardships of life. My institutionalized desires have rebelled. 26 years to date in your rose-colored lenses of protection. Couldn't hallmark 80% of the Big Easy under 25 feet. That's two basketball rims plus the height of the dead girl's body I seen floating up my street. It's hard to romanticize a travesty. You only saved newspaper clippings and media footage, not the permanent eternal images of distress or America's natural displacement of colored old ladies. Babies and me. For days, all we heard was helps on the way, helps on the way. I held my dad so tight night after night. I've never known hunger like that since. Anguish mixed with torment. Just think, patriarchs and matriarchs were killed that day. That's why they took so long to sound the alarm. But after today, you will remember. Remember who birthed soul into this place. Congo Square will never be the same. 26 years to date and I am still preparing to die or dying to live. Because living is dying manifested into the souls that birth you. All I remember from that day is a man with a black face and big hands saying, come here, I won't hurt you. I wiped the tears away just to see the river split our house in half and swallow my mother. This is for you, Nana. 60 years my senior, just too old to hold on, just too old. At the time, I couldn't understand what happened to T. Millie. Nana would always say she had a touch of sugar, but nonetheless, she's not here either. After today, our souls will rest in peace. 
I turned to science because I thought faith failed me or at least provided an explanation for not being able to feel my mother's skin, brush her soft sandy brown hair, look into her mirrored eyes. It's been 26 years and I can't remember her voice. But after today, it will all come back to me, resonating like the stench of dead bodies, shit, piss, women on their periods. 2031 and it's still open season on Negroes. Desegregation, closed doors. Integration, obviously, closed more. 21st century bureaucracy drowned the Crescent City's 20th century technology. Katrina went east, but the hypocrisy had folks going for days without something to drink. Virginia? Pass that red tricycle down to me. Four generations of cousins. After today, I will have a place in the same history books that didn't mention the systematic gentrification carried out some 26 years ago. High rises, condos and boutiques, Bourbon Avenue has been extended much further than Canal Street. How fitting. I'm lost in the darkness. I tried to speak for silent. After today, I won't be looking to know if I'm wrong simply for eternal peace. I ain't even thinking about that steel slab and white sheet. I'm too far gone. It's judgment time. And I'm gonna render it on behalf of the hundreds of children who lost their lives. Time for the fourth man-made disaster to hit New Orleans. Hurricane season ain't over until the fat lady sings. I hear her in the distance. My people, listen to the cries. Burning eyes, driven with.